Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video is going to be all about new makeup from Z Drugstore. I went on a little drugstore makeup shopping spree. I bought a ton of new stuff. I got the new L'Oreal foundation lineup. Ooh, so exciting. The little foundation and the concealer. I have, oh, so excited about these. The new Burt's Bees multi sticks. I've got some Maybelline powders, a lot of lip products, like a lot of lip products, and uh, some eyeshadow palettes. So, really, Truly a little bit of everything a full face some may say so I'm gonna be giving you guys my first impressions And I'm also going to be doing a little bit of a wear test so that you guys will actually get a good idea Of how these products wear throughout the day. So I hope you guys are gonna to enjoy today's video Don't forget to let me know all of your thoughts in the comments as per usual Let me know if you tried any of the products that I'm gonna be talking about today Do you like them? Do you not so much like them? And I would also love if you guys could let me know if you tried any other drugstore products that you really really love that you would like to see me try or review or just let me know if you tried anything from the drugstore that you've been loving so that I can purchase it. Thank you so much. All right, without further ado, let's uh, let's get right into it, shall we? Before I begin, can I please just ask you guys a question? I would love to get your feedback. Do you prefer when I film my videos in this type of lighting? This is completely like natural lighting. I'm literally just sitting in front of a window with zero studio lights. Or do you prefer studio lighting? For me, I sort of prefer natural lighting just because I feel like it gives a better idea of what the product looks like on the skin, whereas studio lighting can sometimes blur the skin a little bit too much where it doesn't look completely realistic. So I would just really like to know what you guys like in the comments because I will totally just adjust to your needs. That's all the uh, technical support that I need for today. Let's actually go into the makeup. So I'm first gonna start off with this guy over here. This isn't new or anything. I've had this in my collection for actually a while. This is just my favorite primer from the drugstore. It's not even a primer. This is a moisturizer. It's the Olay Luminous Whip Moisturizer. I just like this because it's really nice and thick. And I feel like it just provides a really nice base for the makeup to sit on because it is so nice and thick. So I'm just gonna apply quite a bit of this stuff all over my face, especially since uh, the foundation that we're gonna be testing out today is a little bit more on the full coverage and matte side. And as you guys probably know, I have dry skin. Um, so my skin needs to be really, really moisturized to be able to handle that type of foundation. <laughs> now that we are moisturized heavily, it's time to finally go in with the foundation. So like I said, I'm going to be using the new L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear Foundation. I've been hearing such great things about this stuff. A lot of people have been just adoring it. Um, I have not tried it for myself yet, obviously. I got the shade 425. So I'm just gonna take one full pump on the back of my hand. This is a really full coverage foundation. So I've heard, so I don't want to overdo it. So I'm gonna take my Eco Tools Beauty Blender. I'm just gonna pat it into the foundation mixture on the back of my hand, and then just start to pat this all over my face and then blend it in. Oh yeah, that is full coverage, people. Okay, I can tell immediately you need like a pea-sized amount of this product to actually cover up your whole entire face because the coverage is quite full and I feel like it's spreading out also really really evenly on my face like it's not a super thick formula at all it's actually quite thin and I would imagine that if you were to apply this with a brush the coverage would actually be even higher so I mean if you're looking for coverage this stuff definitely has it first impressions on this product I actually really like the way it's looking on the skin I feel like it looks pretty natural looking it definitely doesn't lean too matte, but it also doesn't lean too dewy at all. It's pretty much like a natural skin-like finish, which is always nice. Um, I also really like the way that it feels on the skin. It feels so lightweight and really like nothing, especially for a full coverage product. That's always really nice because sometimes a little bit more full coverage products have like a bit of a thicker texture, which make them just feel heavy on the skin. This feels super, super lightweight. And it also feels like set down completely. Like it doesn't feel like I have to powder this product to make it last, which is just perfect. So far so good. I mean, this has been on my face for approximately two minutes, so I gotta give it a chance to like settle onto my skin. I'm gonna give you guys an update near the end of the video and then I'll give you an update in a few hours. Like I said, I am doing a wear test, but so far so good. It's not like attaching to any dry patches. It went on really nice and smoothly. 
no complaints so far. So I'm going to apply my concealer on my lids just to prime them. I'm not gonna apply it underneath my eyes yet though because I do want to do my eyeshadow first. So I'm taking the Infallible Concealer and a lot of people have been comparing this product to Shape Tape. First of all, it has like the same little giant dope for the applicator as a Shape Tape, which is interesting. The Shape Tape has just become like the universal beauty guru benchmark for all concealers. <laughs> like everybody compares everything to the Shape Tape. I haven't applied it underneath my eyes yet, but I could already tell that this is a pretty full coverage concealer, similar to the Shape Tape. So we'll see, maybe this is somewhat of a dupe. So I am only gonna be using one palette on my eyes today just to you know get a nice well-rounded review on one solid product, but I do have three eyeshadow palettes here that I wanna discuss with you guys. So the two that I purchased are the Physicians Formula Butter Eyeshadow Palette, which is probably the one that I'm going to use today. It looks like this. I was really intrigued by this palette because I felt like it had some really great everyday shades in here. There's a nice mix of neutrals. Um, you have some mattes, some more satin shades, and the metallic shades. I also picked up this NYX Ultimate Shadow Palette in the shade Phoenix, which looks like this. It has really fun colors in here. I actually reminded me quite a bit of a Huda Beauty eyeshadow palette. So I bought this specifically to compare it to that Huda Beauty eyeshadow palette because I wanna see if it could possibly be a dupe. So stay tuned for that. I have to test that out, but the colors in here are really fun and bright. And then lastly, I wanted to talk about this little palette from ColourPop. This is obviously not from the drugstore, but still very, very affordable. It's the It's My Pleasure Pressed Eyeshadow Palette, and I actually used this on my Instagram. I did a full uh, story doing a tutorial using this palette, and I gotta say, it is perfection. I'm obsessed. I've been looking for great cool tone palettes, and this is a gorgeous, gorgeous, purple-based, obviously, cool tone palette, and I just love the shades in here. I think the mattes blend so nicely, the metallics are intense and just beautiful and unique, and I highly recommend it. And like I said, I did do a whole tutorial using this on my Instagram stories, it's in my highlights, so if you haven't checked it out, you can still check it out. I will put my little Instagram handle here if you are interested in seeing it. So let's go in with the Physicians Formula Butter Eyeshadow Palette. If you're wondering if this smells like the butter bronzer, it has that it has like a little touch of it. It's not as intense as the butter bronzer, which is slightly disappointing to me because that's like my favorite smelling makeup product. But it's it, it does have a little bit of a touch of tropical paradise. Okay, first going to go into a very fluffy brush. This is my Morphe and Jaclyn Hill JH31. I'm going to go into this shade right here. It's like a matte mid-tone brown. Um, I'm going to start to apply this right above my crease. I'm just going to go ahead and like blend that back and forth just to diffuse it. I just want something right in that area so that everything else is something to blend into. Okay, I'm going to go in with a small little shader brush. This is my Smith 253 and I'm going to hit this shade right here. And I'm just going to pat that right on the outer corner of the eye. Oh, wow. That is... So pigmented, I really like that. I actually also really like the undertone of this brown. It has a little bit of like a purpley base to it, which I always find to be so flattering in brown shades. So I'm just placing that on the outer corner of my eye. Okay, you guys, <laughs> what? This is applying better than a lot of my high, higher end like brown eyeshadows apply. This is very impressive. I'm gonna go back into the first brown color just to use that to buff out this this shade and it is blending nicely okay i definitely really like the way that these are applying so far so now let's go into this purple shade i mean it would be a crime if i didn't use one of these two brighter colors so i'm actually going to apply this with uh, my flat brush again so this isn't necessarily like a completely metallic shade it does have a bit more of like a satin finish to it Mm, I don't love that. <laughs> Not that I want this to be super vibrant, but I just don't feel like that's really giving me what I want it to give me. I feel like it's a little bit of like a muddy purple shade. It's also not applying quite as smooth as I would like. Oh man, we were, we were riding on such a high and then this sort of just burst my bubble a little bit. Okay, now I'm gonna go into the shade over here. This is more metallic. It's sort of like a pinky rose gold. And I'm gonna pick that up on my finger and just pop that, oh wow. Okay, that just made up for the shitty purple. Wow, this is so pretty. 
That is not what I expected at all. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is so much more like bright and foiled than I imagined it would be. Okay, that's gorgeous. So because that purple was so lackluster and very disappointing, I am actually gonna go into the It's My Pleasure palette from ColourPop because how could I not? This is just like a pure purple palette. And I'm going to go into this shade right over here. This is called Do or Doe. And on my finger, I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of this and just pop it right in the center of my lid. Oh yeah, that is exactly what I was hoping for. Such a pretty color. Okay, I'm gonna take a makeup wipe and I'm just gonna clean up any fallout underneath my eye and I'm also gonna clean up the outer corner. Now that the eyeshadow is done, let's go in with the concealer. So I'm using the shade uh, 360 Cashmere. I'm just gonna apply a small amount. This is definitely a fuller coverage concealer, so it seems, so I don't think I need a lot. I really like that color. And again, going in with the same Eco Tool sponge and just gonna pat that out. Oh yeah, this really does remind me of the Shape Tape. It has a very similar consistency. Okay, first impressions on this concealer. This is definitely very full coverage. It covered up everything pretty easily. I will also say that you should work with this product a little bit quickly. You shouldn't like apply it all over your face like I did and then blend it in. It seems to set down pretty quickly. So if you wait, it just makes it a little bit harder to blend in. But I do really like the way it's looking underneath my eyes. It doesn't look super heavy or anything, even though it is a pretty full coverage concealer. I'm just gonna finish off this eyeshadow look super quickly. I'm actually gonna go back into my ColourPop palette. I know I said I wasn't gonna use it, but now I sort of really wanna use it. You know what? I'm just gonna take the same shade that I applied do do or do sorry and uh, just apply that right underneath my eyes to really tie it in on the lower lash line and I've been really enjoying putting more metallic shades on my lower lash line I find that it makes the eyes look so pretty so I'm putting that going about three quarters of the way in and I'm gonna take another brush something a little bit more precise and I'm gonna go into the shade Earthshine which is the middle shade right here and I'm gonna pop that on the more inner corner of the eye. I actually did this in my little tutorial on Instagram and I loved the way it looked, which is why I'm doing it again today. And I am gonna take just a little bit of the deep dark uh, matte purple in this palette on a little dense liner brush and just press that up against my lashes right on the outer corner just to sort of ground the look a little bit. For my mascara today, this is definitely not a new product for me, but I love this from the drugstore. It is the Essence Lash Princess Boss Lash Effect Mascara. This is a very, very intense mascara. It really makes your lashes look amazing. So I'm just gonna apply this to my upper and my lower lashes. To add even more of a purple pop to this look, I'm gonna take this Annabelle Waterline Matte Coal Eyeliner in the shade Lavender. I love the Annabelle eyeliners. They're so creamy and they apply and last really nicely. I'm gonna put that on my waterline. This color is nice because it's a very light lavender color, so it's actually gonna make the eyes look bigger. It sort of does the same thing that a white eyeliner or a nude eyeliner would do, but because it's lavender, it just sort of goes with the look a little bit more. So now I'm gonna move on to the rest of the face. I'm gonna bronze first with this new bronzer from Maybelline. This is called the City Bronzer in the shade 200. Looks like a really nice color, so I'm excited to try this. Oh yeah, that is a beautiful color. This is definitely a little bit more of like a yellow toned bronzer, which is actually what I prefer. I definitely prefer them over red toned bronzers for my particular skin tone. I just feel like they, they work a lot better. Wow, this color is beautiful. Oh, I'm really into this. Very, very into this. First impressions on this product, I love it. <laughs> I love the shade of it. I love the way it applied. I, I feel like it makes my skin look so nice and golden and sun-kissed and it just is such a flattering color. So A++ for this, this is awesome. Time to play with the new uh, stick products from Burt's Bees, very excited to try these. I have two blush shades here and then one highlighter. Okay, so these are called the Burt's Bees All Aglow Lip and Cheek Sticks and I have the shade Sands, which is more of like a pinky shade. Then I also have the shade Peach, which is obviously more of a peachy shade. These intrigued me because they reminded me uh, of a lot of the Glossier sticks. The Glossier sticks also have like a color surrounding a little balmy, balmy thing in the middle and this one has the same thing. So I thought that was interesting. I wanted to see if it was a dupe. Swatching this on my hand, I could tell that this is a very, very like balmy texture. It feels pretty glossy almost. 
Uh, so it's definitely not a matte formula at all, which is nice because if you want that little bit of an extra glow, this will give it to you. So that's the shade Peach, and that's build up quite a bit. They go on pretty sheer. Oh yeah, you definitely have to build these up quite a bit in order to get some color payoff. That's like built up a lot. So that's Sands and that's Peach. Very, very subtle colors. Definitely not too intense at all. Let's see how they look on the cheeks. Today I'm going to be using the shade Sands because it's a little bit more pinky and I feel like it's just gonna suit my eyes a little bit more. Okay, definitely doesn't give a lot of color at all. You guys know that I love a cream product, especially one that is a little bit more on the natural side. So I'm more interested to try this when I'm wearing a little bit less of like a full coverage look. This is a very like heavy, more glam type of look. I feel like these are probably a little bit more geared towards those like no makeup makeup types of days, which I'm very into. I wear that type of makeup more often than not. So I'm more interested to try these during those types of makeup days. But from what I can tell, these are very, very, very natural looking. Gives only a little bit of color, but a lot of like a nice glossy sheen, which I really, really like. I do have another one here though that is just like a highlighting shade, which I wanted to try today. This is in the shade Opal. It has like pretty much no color to it. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm actually gonna pick it up from the stick to my finger and then just dot it on my skin. Oh, but it looks a lot prettier on the actual face. On the head, I was like, okay, there's literally nothing going on here, but ooh, ooh, I actually love that. Okay, I take that all back. <laughs> I love this. I feel like this is making my skin look so nice and glossy. I have a lot of highlighters like this, but that are more on like the higher end side. So it's actually pretty exciting to find one that is from the drugstore and that gives a really gorgeous effect. I do not have any new brow products to try so I'm just gonna go ahead and do my normal brow routine. I'm gonna use my Benefit Ready Set Brow with the Precisely so I'm gonna just go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Uh, let's play with all the lip products that I got. I got quite a few. So let's first start off with these guys. These are the Burt's Bees Gloss Lip Crayon. This one is called Niagara Overlook 417 and it's like a peachy, warm coral. This really doesn't go with the eye look at all, but this is a really pretty spring color. It's also not as glossy as I expected. I mean, it's literally called a gloss. Oh, this one's matte, sorry. Okay, this one is the matte one, the other one is glossy, so I take that critique back. This is actually really nice for a matte lip color. I feel like, I mean, it's very comfortable and uh, it's very natural looking as well. This is such a pretty color, like more of an everyday shade for spring. Okay, very excited about this one. This one's supposed to be glossy and it is called Santorini Sunrise. What a pretty name. Okay, this one's very sheer. Has only a little bit of color to it. But yeah, not really quite as glossy as I expected, especially for something that's called glossy. I don't know, it's pretty. It's definitely pretty. It's a nice little peachy color. I'm not completely in love though. I feel like I like the other one a little bit more, but it's nice. So I got two lip products from Physicians Formula. This is the Miru Miru Butter lipstick. First shade that I have here is called Flamingo Pink, which is funny because the color in the actual tube looks very nude. So I'm interested to see if this is like good to change color or something. Oh no. Oh. <gasps> That is not what I expected at all. I'm in love. This is, I mean, the exact texture that I like in a lip product right now. It is so glossy, it feels so comfortable, so buttery. I mean, I would assume, considering this is called the butter lipstick, uh, it really does feel super, super just smooth and delicious on the lips. And that color though, wow. I need to get every other shade in this lineup. This is just so perfect. And that gloss and sheen, Oh my God, this is like the most perfect everyday color too. It has just the perfect amount of color to it. Definitely not flamingo pink, but I don't even care. Gonna be a new favorite lip product for sure. Oh, I'm so excited to try the other shade that I got. Okay, so this one is called Soaking Up the Sun. Okay, very similar to the other one. This one's just a little bit more peachy and less pink. Oh my God, you guys, if you like glossy, comfortable, every day, not even just every day, just glossy, amazing, lip balm-esque, type of lip products that give nice pigment, just everything you've ever wanted and more, please try these out. Why is this not being spoken about every single day, 24 seven? 
You know I'm gonna be doing that though. This is another shiny lip product, obviously. It's the Essence Shine 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 Wet Look Lip Gloss. I mean, I read wet look and I was like, okay, uh, yes, be mine. This one over here is in the shade Flirt Alert and it's a bright fuchsia. Ooh, it smells mm, very sweet. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, not as bright as I expected, which I actually like because I didn't really want this to be quite this bright. Texture, ooh, feels so nice. I almost feel like it feels somewhat similar to the Physicians Formula ones, but a little bit, a little bit stickier because this is more of like a gloss formula. But wow, very, very comfortable, very buttery and smooth. All right, that actually finishes off the whole entire look. I'm actually very excited about all the products that I tried today. I will also say that the foundation, I've had this on already for about an hour. It made my skin look really flawless, very poreless, very full coverage, but it, it looks like I'm wearing foundation, but it doesn't look overly heavy at all. And it's just sitting really, really nicely. The Physicians Formula Butter Eyeshadow Palette, I think it's actually quite nice. I do like the way the mattes applied and blended. I was a little bit disappointed with this purple shade, and I feel like the blue shade is probably gonna be like a similar type of deal. Yeah, it's a little bit like, Mm, dusty. Those two brighter shades, not really the greatest, but if you're looking at this just for the neutrals, I feel like they are really nice and I like the way they apply, I like the way they blend, and that rose gold shade, I feel like this palette is worth getting just for that shade alone. For the Burt's Bees blushes and highlighters, um, I like it. Just feel like it's more suited for a no makeup makeup look type of look. They're very low in pigment, but still very glossy, which I do really like. Um, I, I'm interested to see how it's gonna continue to wear throughout the day. So that is it for now. I'm gonna go about my day. I'm actually gonna go to a cafe and start to edit this video that you're watching. And I'll update you guys in a few hours and show you what my face is looking like and give you a little bit of an update. So I'll see you then. All right guys, so I am back for my final check-in of the day. It's been a couple hours. I believe it's been about six or seven hours. I feel like this check-in is more so for the foundation than really anything else. And I gotta say, I am really, really happy with the way this foundation has been wearing throughout the day. It has really stayed in place. It has not faded pretty much at all. It hasn't settled in any like lines on my face, it's just looking really amazing. It definitely looks like I'm wearing foundation, but the way that it's wearing is really flattering. I feel like it's not settling in any fine lines on my face at all. It has even settled around like the lines around my mouth. This is not what I expected with this foundation. I honestly thought that I was not going to like it. I was very prepared for that, but I am very, very, very pleasantly surprised. I feel like it looks awesome. So this is definitely gonna be a foundation that I'm going to be coming back to when I want something a little bit more full coverage, which isn't often, but I mean, it does happen. Same thing goes with the concealer. Looking pretty good underneath the eyes. I have no complaints there. Um, it's not like a mind-blowing formula for me. I feel like I have a lot of other concealers that sort of do the same type of thing. I feel like I will definitely reach for this concealer again when I want something more full coverage. It's not gonna, it's not gonna be my new go-to though. By the way, oh my God, I was editing this video and I noticed that my mascara left like little smudges underneath my eyes and you wonder why I always wear my Hourglass Caution mascara because that is like one of the only mascaras that I have that does not smudge at all. So many other mascaras do that to me, including this one obviously, and it drives me crazy. As far as the eyeshadow goes, still looking really nice and vibrant. It hasn't like faded at all throughout the day. I mean, I haven't really been doing some crazy activities, so I don't know why it would fade, but it's still looking good. As far as the Burt's Bees blushes go, I mean, it's still like on my face. The blush is pretty much non-existent at this point. It's really gave like no color to my cheeks, but I love the highlighter. I feel like I'm definitely going to be using the highlighter more than those blush shades. Again, I'm still looking forward to trying that uh, more on my natural makeup days. I feel like this is just gonna be so much more suited for that type of makeup look. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's drugstore first impressions. Don't forget to let me know all of your thoughts down below and all the products that I used today. Of course, give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you are not subscribed already. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.